Welcome to the panel on the social imaginary in 19th century France. The title of the panel holds an implicit double promise that we will learn about some of the salient contents of the social imaginary in France in the troubled period after the revolution and before the First World War, and that we will also learn what the key word social imaginary stands for as a concept and a tool of historical analysis. All of us have, I think, a rough intuitive sense of what the social imaginary entails, for some of us, the term might even summon up the name of the theorist Cornelius Castoriadis. But most of us, and I would put myself in this category, would be hard pressed to articulate its meaning clearly or in formal terms. Hence today's panel. We will hear from four speakers, all cultural historians. To save time, we have a very rich and full session ahead of us. Let me introduce them all now in the order in which they will speak. Firstly, James Johnson, professor of Boston, at Boston University, is well known for his book, Listening in Paris, which traces the sea change in the subjective postures of opera goers and concert goers in the French capital between 1750 and 1850. He subsequently turned to another little studied cultural practice, that of masking, in early modern and modern Europe, straying from French history long enough to produce Venice Incognito, published in 2011. Now back in the fold, and we're happy to have him back, he is continuing the study of the wearing of masks in the French context. And his paper today draws on that research. It is entitled Paul Verlaine, Masks, and the French Fin de Siècle. Dominique Khalifa, professor of 19th century French history at the Sorbonne, likewise gravitates to little studied cultural practices and is well known for his predilection to turn his historian's eye to the social margins. His first book, L'Encre et le Sang, examined the production of stories about crime for the mass circulation dailies and pulp fiction of the Belle Epoque. His second book took as its unlikely subject the birth and development of the detective agency in France. A more recent book, Birebi, explored the way of life in the penal colonies of North Africa set up by the French army. His most recent book, published just this year, is directly relevant to our panel. It is entitled Les Bafons, that is the underworld, Histoire d'un imaginaire. His title today bears a, his paper today bears a similar title, The Bafon as a Social Imaginary. Erin Marie Legacy is the only member of the panel who is not an old hand on the history scene. She received her PhD from Northwestern in 2011 and is presently assistant professor at Texas Tech. Her doctoral thesis, Living with the Dead in Post-Revolutionary France, 1795 to 1820s, focused on the unexpected cultural role played by the dead in the reconstruction of Paris after the revolution. Her paper today, with its witty title, A Grave Accord, Reimagining Paris in the City of the Dead, draws on her um, dissertation research. And finally, our commentator, Sarah Mazza, Jane Long Professor of Arts and Sciences at North Western, is also a historian of little studied cultural practices. She's probably best known for her book, Private Life and Public Affairs, which located the nascent political consciousness of the late 18th century French 
in the widely read published legal briefs of the era that narrated stories of personal and family scandal. Stories that contemporaries understood simultaneously on a literal and on a political level. She has also written memorably about 18th century domestic servants and a 1930s case of a working class ad adolescent who poisoned her parents. She is, in addition, author of a book with our keyword social imaginary in the subtitle. That is The Myth of the French Bourgeoisie, an essay in the social Im imaginary, 1750 to 1850. I think we can take that subtitle as strong evidence that she had a hand in the organization of this panel. Okay, so let's turn then to Jim.